Welcome to Indy 5 here on Rauta. It's already mid-October and we're still getting towards the rest of the year with more extreme metal ones. Uh, now in this Indy 5 I have uh, five different releases from various places, various times and various genres. So let's go on with it. We'll start from El Salvador with a band called Demonomancer, Poisoner of the New Black Age, released by Dunkel Height. This one is a 55 minutes compilation with 22 tracks of some noisy madness. And I tell you what madness it is. Unfortunately, I am going to say this one is a really crappy album. I don't, I'm not gonna waste too much time on it because I really had crappy time with this one. However, if you're a fan of underground uh, black death noisiness, this might be your cup of tea because, well, this is very underground release. It's a compilation of sorts, so 20. Two tracks are all made of uh, different releases. Comes with a booklet with a small font, a um, couple of Xerox copied images to make this uh, War Black Death kind of a band look really badass. Unfortunately, the only badass thing is that... <sighs> well, there is no badass thing. The thing here is, it is very noisy. It's basically trying to be violent, fast tempo, Brutal War, Black Death Metal, kind of a hybrid, but everything is too noisy. Everything from the buzzing guitar sound, which is, by the way, very weak. Think of uh, a matchbox uh, with a kind of a wasp in it. It makes this kind of a sound, and that is how the guitar sounds. It's that great. Also, the vocals are sometimes too distorted, sometimes they're just crawly, shrieky, whatever mess, and it is very, very, very boring. And because of this very bad production, which, by the way, differs from a song to another because of various releases. This is very, very annoying to listen to. Uh, 55 minutes is way too long even for mediocre albums, but with really crappy songs like this one because they make, they don't make much sense. And it's just like fast tempo and just some riffing, which pff, waste of my fracking time. Let's move on. Next in line is Ikuturso from uh, Finland. This comes in tape format, limited format, nice orange colors. Um, as you can see, a few songs, six in total, one being the Satyricon cover, the last one, and the rest are just the band's own worship of 1990s black metal style, the Nordic way. By Nordic, I mean in this case, Isengard and Satyricon getting married, having kid, and those genes are pretty much here, only to be, you know, singing in Finland. Now, um, this is actually really nice worship tape. I mean, it's kind of understandable that this is kind of a self-financed tape instead of uh, being, you know, a uh, big CD release or LP release. And as you can see, this is hand numbered, limited. But I, I would have seen, like to see this on LP or whatever, because I think it's very much capturing the proper folky black metal spirit of early Satyricon and Isengard with its la 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 type of singing, you know, the kind of a folky way. And also, I don't mind the hobbits running around. I mean, the Tolkienish feeling, yeah, it's very well much pumped well. But still, I mean, this kind of captures where Isengard kind of left off and Satyricon moved on from here. And these guys are like, hey, don't you forget this great way of creating this kind of a folky medieval type of black metal. Medieval black metal did it exist in the medieval times, but you get the idea. Uh, so if you're a fan of early Satyricon or, you know, you like the toes to bigger Isengard releases, this is definitely something you should be watching out. And also, uh, you could also did quite nice debut album, The Great Tower, so if you are into that, or if you are going to check out the band, this one is a good start, but so is the debut album, so there you have it. From the members of The Affilium, the Swedish atmospheric black metal band, and also the vocalist of Ikuturso and Rathic, Rath Age, um, comes from this side project called Universal Disorder. Let's start with the tape here. Tape covers, J covers. This is a uh, self-financed uh, tape with only two tracks, although they are both more than 10 minutes, around 10-15 minutes long. And uh, in the letter that followed 
or came with this tape. It was said that this is planned to come out as a two-part EP, like first tape, including the first two tracks and the second one, including the rest, and supposedly uh, trying to find a label to put out them both on a single CD or whatever. Now, clearly this actually uh, makes the Diaphilium uh, kind of a atmospheric black metal kind of a shine true. That is, this is very melodic, atmospheric black metal, and seems like there's no point really to make this kind of a side project when your main band is very much the same. Although I know there are many bedroom black metal projects or solo projects which have the same kind of idea, like one band doing, I don't know, nature-oriented black metal and basically the same kind of stuff released with different kind of lyrics doing exactly the same stuff but different kind of uh, covers and whatever. To be honest, I don't think this is much of a thing. It's kind of a mediocre release. I mean, there are good moments here and there, but the tracks being very lengthy, uh, it really doesn't make them kind of a wow moments, you know? It is like a good melody part here. Can you wait another five minutes? And like, okay, this is quite nice also. And their overall is just like extending too much, in my opinion. Um, I would rather say go with the Ephilium if you have to pick only one. There's already a review out there. But also, I must say, it, that, that neither is not that great of a release, unfortunately. So, so I must say, uh, this is a little bit of a leftover feeling overall, and as such, I cannot recommend it too much. But give it a try and decide for yourself. Then we move totally in a different direction with uh, India's band Kapala. This is out here with both tape and CD. If you have uh, heard previous material of Kapala, you know this is very noisy, grindy, death black combination, being very extreme, both in production-wise as the music. Unfortunately so, the music is quite terrible in its own field of uh, extreme metal. The thing here is, with this kind of noisy production and uh, not so much good riffing, it becomes very, very boring after a while. So here we have... Uh, background of the inlay as well as the kind of a backside with the band image and all that stuff. Uh, this is kind of an EP length of a release so it's some 25 minutes if I recall right and it continues very much with the uh, invest test pool this being terminating termination apex. So I don't know about you but this kind of a black red imagery with these kind of names kind of reminds me of being kind of a I don't know conquer or revenge worship and it tries so hard to be this very extreme band with this noisy output uh, and very noisy production and being kind of a fast tempo all the way around but to be honest it gets very very uh, boring and repetitive after a while I must say, the designs as such look nice, the lyrics are nicely laid out here. The cover is kind of a badass, not being kind of a edgy as such. But the music, I mean, come on, you need to have some good riffs if you're gonna be a memorable extreme metal band. It doesn't, I mean, just being noisy and just being extreme with it, the production and all that stuff, it, it's not gonna cut it. I mean, and if you're gonna go extreme with sounding noisy and making all these hisses and, you know, distorted vocals very good, go for power electronics, go for harsh noise, because that is anyway more extreme when it comes to kind of a uh, oral ways of, you know, terrorizing people's ears and minds. But if you want to play black death metal crying-tastic combination, this is kind of like a compromise with it. I mean, it's not having, it's not best of the world, both worlds, but what kind of a worst of the both worlds because it's lacking the good riffs. It's lacking the good production, which makes heavier riffs just, you know, blow your mind. And adding distortion to your vocals or whatever, I mean, it's kind of a cheap trick, which kind of a turns into a gimmick after a while. And as such, it's like, okay, heard one track, heard them all. And as such, it becomes more as a nuisance rather than musical exploration of wonderful things and whatever. So, I mean, it's like uh, you're not 
harsh enough to be noise, but then you're not either actually a good extreme metal release. I don't know for which kind of people that is uh, aimed for, but really I must say one of the worst releases by Dunkel Height, which is a nice label and doing really nice marginal releases, but this is just, in my opinion, a bad miss. Now even harsher, we go with this another Dunkel Height uh, production release, uh, which is a uh, split between Scat Mother and Chaos Cascade, and it's called Sacrifice Sacrificial Rites of Devotion. Um, looks like a metal release in a way, but I must tell you, this is more like harsh noise slash power electronic split. Um, where Scatmatter is the one leaning more towards the noisy parts and uh, Case Cascade being more on the uh, power electronics, if I get those genres right. I mean, I barely scratch the surface of the genres throughout the years. I've been seeing many gigs of them, and on gigs, those bands actually work nicely, having video material of some kind of raw stuff that it might be torture, snuff film kind of a thing, or beatings, or what, whatever violence, or maybe even just brutal sex. When, when it just comes to listening to those on the album, it kind of a, a lax the, the video material, which then again complements the actual music. And I find this kind of a boring album. That is mostly because Cat Mother seems to repeat itself throughout those four tracks very much doing the same track all over again. Of course this might be just because I'm not a noise fan or specialist expert, if you will. But the thing is, once you get that noisy kind of a wall there and you're like, okay, this is kind of shocking because it's so noisy. And then after a while, it's like, it's just noisy. It's, I mean, I could just be listening to somebody doing power drills or I don't know, vacuum cleaning and it would be as much interesting if you know what I mean. However, uh, Case Cascade does that a little bit more interesting. They have more variation with those tracks and even though it's kind of a noisy as well and they're distorted vocals and all that stuff, um, they're, Variation makes it kind of like, hey, here is this theme of the track, and this is this kind of that. So it's way more better, but I think Case Cascade is kind of a getting tracked down by Scat Matter because on its own it would be more interesting, but on this kind of a split release, it's more like getting the later part of the release and kind of like trying to pick up where Scat Matter left all just on laying on the floor and Scat. Case Cascade is like, okay, hey, cheer up fans, here comes the music. But I don't know, this is very much uh, for those acquired taste buds, uh, buddies who are into noise and uh, power electronics and this kind of mar marginal music, not for your average metalhead. I, I didn't find this album too appealing. This is more like just getting, getting me bored, but I know there are lots of people who actually like to get this kind of noisy stuff. So don't take my word for that. Check out for yourself. But if you know that you're allergic to noise, power electronics, and those kind of marginal music, don't waste your time with that. This is not worth the effort. Um, so all, all over again, to recap this stuff, we had some uh, atmospheric black metal, we had kind of noisy black metal, we had some Isengard satiric worshipping, and we had some power electronics and whatever. So kind of a rich in compilation. I wouldn't advise to anybody to check out all the bands and albums listed in this Indie 5. So do your cherry picking and pick out the ones that you actually seem interesting to you and hope you enjoy what you listen to. There you go. Sure you have any comments, opinions, or whatever, put them on the comment box below. And see you soon with more Rotary reviews coming your way.